Thank you, Best Buy, for sponsoring today's video. I think till this day, one of the biggest debates in tech to date is Apple versus PC. I used to ask myself that question a long time ago. In fact, in 2017, I kind of spent most of my savings and sold my custom PC for a 15 inch MacBook Pro. I kept it for two years and I absolutely loved that thing. And to be honest, I was quite happy with it. I had my fights here and there with it, but I loved it. With time though, I realized my MacBook couldn't do it all. I couldn't game anymore like I used to. Office 365 apps weren't the same. I was having issues keeping up with some of the engineering software I needed. And because I was starting to create content, the MacBook at the time wasn't able to keep up as well as a Windows laptop. Today, things have changed. There are many things that macOS does so much better than Windows. But at the same time, there are many other things that Windows does better than macOS. Look, what I'm trying to get at is that if in 2024 you are currently living the same dilemma I once had, should I go back to Windows, should I go back to macOS, having recently replaced my MacBook Air with the LG Grand Pro as my daily made me wonder if maybe sharing my experience and comparing both of these laptops since they are somewhat similar could help you either pick one platform over the other. And for these at least, I think their similarities all start with their design. I mean, I've found both of these laptops to be quite similar in their build. Surprisingly, the LG Gram being lighter but not thinner, we are talking about a difference of 0.31 kilograms and about 0.09 centimeters in thickness. Very negligible, as when I had the LG Gram in Manchester and the MacBook Air in Italy, I honestly felt no difference in weight carrying them within my bag. Having thin laptops when traveling though is really nice and it's my recommendation. What's also really nice is being able to trust your chassis. The MacBook Air is made out of a machine aluminum case with a new anodized seal which is set to reduce fingerprints. I've already said it in the past but I don't think the new seal is as good as I would have liked it to be. This thing picks up a lot of fingerprints but the same thing goes with the LG Gram, although not as bad but enough to bother you if that's a pet peeve of yours. The LG Gram, however has a totally different material, especially at the bottom of the chassis where it doesn't feel like metal but more like plastic. The top is potentially this texturized rugged magnesium alloy. It is also MIL STD810H certified, which is basically like a very durable military standard often applied to commercial products. Compared to the air though, I did feel like I had to be a bit more careful with it, especially while traveling. I think the confidence the metal chassis the air gives you is just like unbeatable. The mix of potential plastic and super lightweight hardware doesn't give you that sense of security with the gram. However, for such a lightweight laptop, it does sure carry a lot more ports than the Air and I've enjoyed that. I've gone to enjoy two Thunderbolt 4 ports, an HDMI port, two USB 3.2 ports, and an audio jack for headphones. I do wish both had SD card slots so I wouldn't have to carry my dongle and waste some ports. Although there are ways to minimize port usability like connecting, I don't know, a pair of gaming headphones wirelessly. Since the amount of ports are kind of limited for a full setup, you don't necessarily need to connect most 2.4 GHz dongles to it. You can indeed rock something like the Arctis Nova 5 through Bluetooth, and if your headset offers it, Connect a second device like your main rig through the dongle. I've been gaming in order to test these headphones these past few weeks and I've really enjoyed being able to quickly switch between my sources with one button. The Arctis Nova 5 are very, very comfortable. I do like the stock pads these come with. It lets your ears breathe a bit. And since they are light at 262 grams, they really haven't bothered me after using them for extended periods of time. I did have to charge them the other day quickly. In about 15 minutes, it delivered a little under 6 hours of use. On top of that USB-C port though, you've got the power button and the switch toggle button. I think as a whole, the controls on these are evenly spread across the left and right ear cup. Like reaching out for the volume, the mute button as well is incredibly easy. But the Nova 5 app does allow you to control all of this and more. 
The very first thing I did when I got these was pretty much connect them to the app, mainly because it's the place where not only you can play with the volume and the side tone, but it's the place where you can actually tweak your EQ settings. I found any changes you make happen like instantly, and out of a list of 100 presets, you have many, many current heavy hitter games to choose from. My favorite one is the Valorant preset, of course. I found that the sound that comes out of these is very well balanced with the bass being decent, but I also enjoy the Call of Duty and the Hogwarts preset for that immersive sound. Look, if you wish to really get down to it, like if you are looking for a great wireless solution to get some work in gaming done, I recommend you check out the Arctis Nova 5 over at Best Buy, link down below. When it comes to upgradability, I mean I think most Windows laptops have the upper hand, although the LG Gram in the world of Windows laptops doesn't have the best upgradability in my opinion, however, it's still better than the MacBook Air. Being able to upgrade your SSD is still a big plus. The only thing that sucks about the RAM is not being able to physically upgrade the RAM and their pricing model really doesn't help. It's kind of very similar to Apple actually. Both laptops though are just as easy to take apart. Actually, MacBooks are a bit harder to take apart, but still very doable. With the Air being fanless versus the LG having a full engineered cooling system, both different watt hour batteries that being 66.5 for the air versus 90 for the gram and of course both very different speaker setups with the air destroying the gram two brand new beautiful cars with me today i'm here joined by michael rosler if you'd like to introduce yourself to my channel I do have to give it to both brands. With these internals and with the regular usage, both of these laptops run pretty freaking cool. While gaming on the gram, I do have to say it gets a lot hotter and the fans kick in hard. Although even with these dual fans, I've found it to run quiet like 80% of the time. As a whole, I mean, we are comparing an M3 chip my model having 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 terabytes of storage versus an Intel Core Ultra 7 155H with 32 gigabytes of RAM, 2 terabytes of storage, and an RTX 3050 with 4 gigabytes of VRAM. All of that actually helps power up the 16 inch 120 hz OLED screen compared to the 60 hz IPS LCD screen the Air delivers, which is much, much sturdier by the way. I think this is my biggest complaint about the gram. The screen wobble and flex is just not the best. I did ask LG about it and they said being able to deliver this much flex reassures you from knowing how durable this can be. However, it kind of really annoys me when I see so much wobble after opening this up. In the plane though, when I was using it, the wobble was very minimal. It's not something I noticed much at all actually. It's more noticeable when you open it up or moving around with it as the hinge is not as sturdy. I don't know, I guess it's just a very different experience compared to the Air. I think to add to that experience, display wise, it really is different. OLED 120Hz versus IPS 60Hz, the colors are so much better on the gram in my opinion, but the text clarity with IPS is always unbeatable when talking OLED. I do like that motion clarity while dealing with code or scrolling through a lot of text is cleaner with the gram, but being OLED, reflections are just harder to deal with. It did kind of annoy me at times compared to the MacBook, but the quality of the screen really offsets that for the most part. Both are displays that deliver very close to 500 nits of tested brightness. Of course, the gram being 16 inch and the Air 15 inch delivers a bit more room to play with and we get clean bezels on both models with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Both are very nice displays, but for color accuracy and coding, I think the LG gram was my favorite one. Although for everyday tasks, I do have to give it to the MacBook Air. When it comes to keyboard and trackpad, I think MacBooks have the best trackpad in the industry. In my opinion, they are unbeatable and very hard for us to make a fair comparison. The responsiveness, the material, the tactile feedback these give you, it's more of a mechanical digital blend compared to like this full mechanical feel. They also tend to be much bigger on MacBooks, smaller on Windows laptops. I don't know, if this is a pet peeve of yours, then most Windows laptops might not be the move for you. When it comes to the keyboard, I found my experience to be actually very similar. 
When I went from the grime to the air, I didn't really need much time to readjust. Going back and forth between these two is actually quite easy. I mean, yes, the LG Grime does give you the ability to have a full-sized keyboard, but in terms of keystrokes, key size, the feel of the keys, I don't know, it, at its core, the experience is just quite the same. Yes, I mean, I do like the larger function row keys and the way to actuate them on the MacBook is better. The spacebar also does feel slightly more complete, but that's about it for my experience. I think regardless of which laptop you end up getting, the main thing to consider is pricing. The pricing model is a bit funky primarily for this LG. They only give you the ability to either get the 16 gigabyte of RAM unit with one terabyte and no RTX or a 32 gigabyte unit with two terabytes and an RTX 3050. I find that bundling the RAM, the SSD and the GPU doesn't give you proper flexibility. It's kind of weird. And this is where the LG starts to slowly crumble compared to the Air. For $16.99, you can get a MacBook Air 15 inch with 16 gigabytes of unified memory and 512 gigabytes of storage, a laptop that has a better GPU compared to what Intel Arc has to offer. So if we were to compare the $15.99 unit from LG, the only benefit you would be gaining would be an extra 500 gigabytes of storage. In order to get that NVIDIA RTX 3050, you need to upgrade your laptop to a 32 gigabyte and two terabyte storage unit. Price-wise, that would be us comparing it to a 15 inch MacBook Air with 24 gigabytes of unified memory and two terabytes of storage. But at the end of the day, both of these laptops carry very different operating systems. Both OSs are very, very capable, but I've realized with time that they each have their own strengths. Mac OS for starters is properly compartmentalized, making it easier to manage. And because it's aware of the development of its own hardware, MacBooks tend to last longer. A very easy and simple example of that is the way Apple Silicon is so good at memory management. Windows, on the other hand, is different. As an analogy, imagine trying to fit the same engine in different types of cars. It's a lot harder for that engine to keep up with all the possible outcomes of all the different chassis is trying to fit. Mac OS just has better hardware software management than Windows since Apple controls the entire ecosystem. However, Windows has a lot more flexibility. When I was in engineering school, for example, even in software, we would use Windows based laptops. There are so many software and tools that are not properly supported by Mac. So because Windows supports a lot more than Mac OS, a lot of people rather use Windows. Microsoft also just bends over backward to keep older software working and with it you can of course install many of the programs you may be used to use back in Windows XP or Windows 98. With Windows you can of course game properly, use Office 365 apps to the fullest, do proper .NET development, the only thing you really miss out on is a proper ecosystem and a Unix based computer. For a lot of programmers, macOS is actually the go-to because it's built on top of Unix and it's very, very similar to a Linux-based machine. Off the bat, everything just works for development. Don't get me wrong, installing Dolly SL on Windows works really, really well too, but there are some limitations and bugs that you don't feel like dealing with when in development. Xcode and iOS development is also not natively supported, plus there aren't any Windows laptops that have the same battery life as ARM-based MacBooks. Windows can also get annoying, my pet peeves with it are the weird update process it has, the use of backslash instead of forward slash, the registry, the annoying DOS drive designations, command prompt is just absolutely not for me, but Windows does file management a lot better than Mac OS. There are so many more technical reasons as to why one is better than the other, but for the general public and from experience, I think these are the ones that stand out the most. But yeah, I mean, the gaming experience on a Windows laptop is so much better and the Gram being something that is so similar to the MacBook really is able to deliver a better gaming experience. Well, at least in some cases. For me, playing Valorant on this thing has been honestly just absolutely fantastic. F1 as well runs really well on this laptop on low to medium settings at 1080p, but the 3050 really isn't the best laptop GPU to get. AAA games don't run as nicely as I wish they would, like Cyberpunk at 1080p with low settings and DLSS set to performance doesn't really yield proper frames per second to make it a full enjoyable experience. Call of Duty is kind of the same. 
and sadly for me Helldivers 2 was just unplayable. I will say this, this is the only time where the laptop gets uncomfortably hot, especially towards the dull USD keys. So look, as much as it's cool to have an RTX 3050 in here, sometimes I wonder if it's worth to spend the extra money on something like this. I think it's a bit of a bottleneck for the system when it comes to gaming, and I've noticed that thermal throttle can eventually ruin your gaming experience. It's always tricky inserting RTX GPUs on notebooks and comparing them to MacBooks. However, when it came down to editing, if you are a creator, the RTX 3050 paired with the Ultra 7 was fantastic. I think the performance they both yield whether it's by using DaVinci, Lightroom, putting any sort of backend or fronted project, and even some AI stuff is very very similar but not exact, I think the MacBook still feels snappier, but thanks to the RTX 3050, it makes the transition from the MacBook era a lot easier. These past few months, the only ways I've been able to fully push my laptops is by doing creative work, for example, using a DaVinci timeline with a bunch of music, voiceovers, color graded clips, text, all of this media without needing to render it runs so well and it scrubs really great on the gram. It's a very very similar experience as the MacBook Air. Editing my pictures on Lightroom while still having DaVinci running in the background can be a bit funky and slow at first but it eventually yields a great smooth experience like on the Air. And luckily, I've found that unlike gaming, I can actually still keep the same performance without needing to be plugged in at all times. I think having gone from the air to the ground really didn't change much in performance for me. The only thing is that I haven't been able to keep up with my iOS development courses, which has been primarily the development I've been doing. But when it came time to, I don't know, have multiple Chrome tabs open, use Notion to manage our business and production, maybe some Excel sheets running in the background, Discord, VS Code with a few projects loaded into it, and maybe Spotify playing some music, the performance both yield are just very similar. However, the Air is just able to deliver the same performance for longer. The one thing that the MacBook really does far better than any Windows laptops is battery life. There's no laptop that is able to deliver a better battery life than current Apple Silicon MacBooks. The battery life on mine is absolutely great. I've tracked my battery life pretty closely in the past and I easily get 14 to 15 hours if all I'm doing is admin tasks with some YouTube at medium brightness. When I'm editing on DaVinci using some Lightroom and Photoshop, I found those hours to drop to around 8 to 10 hours. The same thing goes with coding, although it's a bit more complicated. I mainly use Xcode on this laptop and when I do, 90% of the time it's docked charging. I think on average for me, the MacBook Air definitely yields around 12 hours of use. When it comes to the LG Gram, the average consumption for me is more around 8 to 10 hours. 10 hours is really not doing much with it though. Although for me, it's been the best Windows laptop I've used in terms of battery life. When I brought this to Manchester with me, I was kind of worried about having to charge it often. I remember this lasting exactly about four hours and a half when all I was doing on the plane was editing on Da Vinci. And from experience, that's about an hour and a half better than other Windows laptops I've used while editing. I think after all this time, the big question is, is the LG Gram Pro, a Windows laptop, a proper MacBook Air replacement in 2024? If you spend the extra money it could be, or at least for me in my own experience, it's the Windows laptop I've used that has gotten the closest. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your experiences, but personally, the Gram for what it is was such a good laptop to me. Going from the Gram to the Air in terms of power was very unnoticeable, although the battery life being much better on the air, and I have a feeling that with 24 gigabytes of RAM, I would be having slightly better performance for my use case. Other than that, I think if you were in the market for an air replacement, this could be a really good candidate for you. I'm just having a hard time recommending spending the extra money on the 3050, but then I feel like this comparison wouldn't even fly. Like always, I suggest you buy from websites that have proper return policies, and I suggest you watch a few more reviews to make an educated purchase for your replacement. MacBooks are definitely not easy to replace, but it's doable. Remember, I only talk from experience after integrating devices into my lifestyle, so be mindful of that. I will leave you guys with this. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I will see you all soon, and take care.